Typical couple. Typical couple. She he's going eighty, heading right towards Carrie, and mm-hmm. she goes, "Hit her, hit her." He's like, "I got it, babe." Stop side seat driving. <laughs> I'm already on it. I've got this. <laughs> Hey there, boils and ghouls. Welcome to another episode of Hollow Weekly. Nick Rollins. George Ailey. Didn't you have to say here with? No. Which is new. We just no. appeared. We just appeared. <laughs> we just appeared. And we right. have another episode of Hollow Can We Go with 48% with Carrie. And Carrie the remake. Uh, Carrie the remake. 2013, I believe. 2013. Definitely. And if uh, if this is uh, the first uh, Hollow Can You Go episode, Hollow Can We Go is our series where we start at 59% on Rotten Tomatoes. Just rotten and work our way down one percentage point at a time, finding a horror movie on each level until there's no more good ones. And yeah, until well, until we hit zero or kill, until we hit zero or ourselves. we or we hit yeah, <laughs> either or. Right. But we have had a really good run so far. Like, yeah, there hasn't been a. Boring... We started at fifty nine percent. We're at forty eight percent, and I have enjoyed every single movie we watched so far. Yeah, there hasn't been like there's there's some films where like it's a little slow or something, but overall like. There hasn't been a bad film. No, I'm actually really glad we're doing this because I'm watching movies I wouldn't have watched otherwise. So. Yeah, and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have gotten around to the Carrie remake because there was a lot of hate around it. A lot of hate, um, which I don't understand. Yeah, at po- this point. we just watched it. Yeah, so we're coming out of another review fresh, and and uh, I don't understand all the hate too. The only thing I do understand is that people who get wrapped up in the original versus remake argument which I find super boring, by the way, mm-hmm. um, it, they are going to, I'm sure, have a lot of problems with the fact that Brian De Palma is a unique director that no one can really uh, duplicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I went into this like, like if, if there wasn't an original or if you were like... Uh, or the TV series that people don't compare it to for some reason. <laughs> right. What would you think of this movie just coming at it fresh without thinking there was another I already have my rating thing for to it. compare it to? Oh, you do? Wow. That's, yeah. All right. The suspense is blown. Let's do it. I think 80%. Whoa. Solid. 80%. Yeah. I think a solid fucking 80%. Uh, I am going to surprise you a little and say that I think a fair Rotten Tomatoes rating for this movie would be 71. Mm. I can see that too. Yeah, I get that. And it, the, there's there's a couple reasons that we'll get into why, like, I would put it at a 71. Even standing on its own terms, um, there's some a couple major stumbly moments where I was, like, way taken out of the movie. Yeah. But it was nothing compared to the stuff that I enjoyed from it. Yeah. But, to, but as, like, the first, like, if there was no original. Yes. If there was no original, I still think it's, like... It's a super. I mean, it's a, it's a. There's a there's a reason why they did the TV series and why people like Carrie so much. Yeah, well, so that's one of the things though is 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 when you think about should you like Stephen King actually asked this question like mm-hmm. why are they remaking this? He actually also asked the question about why they're remaking it. Yeah, right. So like Stephen King likes to ask this question <laughs> apparently, right? <laughs> and and to me, one of the answers to this is. Carrie is one of Stephen King's few urban legends. Mm-hmm. Carrie has a, like an almost fairy tale structure, right? It's 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 yeah. really like um, like an archetype, right? So like, there's other things that he's done that are like a like Salem's Lot doesn't have that vibe no, to no, me, no. right? Because I mean, first of all, it's is kind of a rip off of Dracula, which he, which he admits. And and you can't rip off an archetype and have another archetype, right? Yeah. So, but this one, like the story, is so um, sort of unique, and you're so pulling for a character that ends up ostensibly being the villain. Mm-hmm. Which, which, I mean, when does that happen in horror? Once in a while, right? Like Hannibal Lecter became sort of a hero, heroish, people, yeah. right? Somehow, like whatever. But like Carrie's the villain, but also the hero at the same time, and I think this movie gets a lot of that right. Yeah, and 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 the I was thinking about like the beats of the film, just like mm-hmm. you know, like the when we, like going into like the third act, like all of those beats felt really good. Like you had your intro that you introduced to everyone, 
to you and then the second part you finally got a look into the home life and what the fuck she was all going through Mm -hmm. and then what led her to that and like the beginning of like the third act i was like oh shit this is where it's gonna get real good (laughs) which it did yeah honestly it got really but it was fluid the whole movie was fluid there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot there wasn't any bits that i thought were like dragged out because it's sort of like if she's not at school getting picked on She's at home getting fucked with by her mom. Yes. So there's like no room to like really like let Carrie breathe, which nope. may, which it works out so fucking well, like in the famous like ending. Yeah, totally. You know, ending scene. Because, yeah, exactly. And that's actually one of the things that I wanted to call out about this remake that I found really interesting was there were some surprisingly subtle like hints towards the threat that's inherent in objects. Right. So like the the first scene you see Carrie, she's a baby. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and there's that horrible screaming. I thought that was pretty effective, actually. Yeah. I didn't know you turned the movie on. And all of a sudden I heard this like scream. Yeah. <laughs> like whatever. And I was like, what the hell is that? It sounds like a, someone's doing, like multiple people getting murdered. But the the scene, the first time you're introduced to Carrie, the way we're going to know her through the movie is she's playing water volleyball, mm-hmm. which you got oddly jealous of. And I wanted then- <laughs> to play it. <laughs> It looked like a lot of fun. <laughs> it did. It did look like a lot of fun. But it was cool because they they the camera cornered her. Like it kept shooting everybody else in a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shooting her isolated in the corner of the pool. And then they kind of like egged her on into doing like, you, Carrie, you serve it, right? Mm-hmm. And it laid out literally the entire dynamic of the movie in like one miniature moment. Because the gym teacher is like, yeah, Carrie, serve it. Because the gym teacher's role in this movie is to keep encouraging Carrie to think good things are happening yeah. and lead her into worse and worse danger, <laughs> which is right. Like, yeah, yeah right? but she has the best of intentions. She though. does. No, of course she does. But that's just going to play out that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Carrie is like tentatively like, okay, I'll serve it. And she hits the volleyball and plows it right into the back of someone's head. And then everyone laughs at her. I mean, that's the entire movie is Carrie is going to use objects to hurt people. They're going to laugh at her, and she's going to use objects to hurt people more. Funny enough, though, she did plow the volleyball into the girl who was, like, there for her, though. So, like, I, they totally yes. went, like, I thought the the film was going to be, like, oh, that's going to be, like, the mean bitch of the film. Yeah, totally. And I sort of like how, like, they didn't do that kind of shit. No, no. Ex- that's what I mean. It was a subtler than I expected. Right? So. The film sort of did, like, what I feel during horror films, where, like, I think, Man, wouldn't it be nice if she just had like some good people in the high school who like had her back? And then like they gave that. And I was like, oh, so that's what this movie looks like. Well, yeah, but half good. I mean, they I think the good people in this movie were mostly doing the good things out of guilt. I mean, to yeah, be honest but... with you, if if like let, let do a thought experiment. If um uh what's her name? The good Sue, the good the good one who yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if she had been sick and out of school that day right and everyone else had had thrown tampons at carrie and like carried on and posted videos on youtube they're fucking idiots afterwards then um nothing else would have played out the way it played out sue would have gone to prom with her boyfriend because she'd had no guilt right it was guilt that was powering her like i'm gonna sacrifice my boyfriend and my prom night you know, to whatever. She might have felt bad for her, but I don't think she would have gone that far. So I think there's like this sticky guilt element that's kind of actually cool that was that was in the Yeah, movie. but it's like whatever gets you there. <laughs> so, well, like, totally true. I mean, they did turn out to be good people, right? They, yeah, like they, like you could, you could feel guilty, but she still showed up at her house at the end. Like, I felt guilty about shit, but I wouldn't yeah, show up to their fucking well, house. Well, yeah, after you watch someone implode a high school, you don't really go to their house. I right? would be like, like that oh. was super brave, and you could tell she was like ultra motivated at that point to make things right so yeah that's totally true so they uh, they did they, they did redeem her which i which i liked plus tommy's dead yeah i thought he was just knocked out but then you were like those buckets are heavy i'm like they're not it wasn't like filled with pigs blood heavy it wasn't oh he was so dead dude. he was like wiped out on the ground and it doesn't matter anyway because the whole place burned down and he was clearly unconscious yeah he wasn't getting out of there when that happens so. yeah he was he was he was totally but okay so let's but let's get into this part of it because I, I i find this super fascinating there, there are two main charges against this movie online. They aggregate into two categories. One is pff, 
doesn't hold a candle to the original. The original is so creative and this is so conventional and Brian De Palma loves to fly the camera around and do split screens and this movie yeah, just yeah. showed you things. And the second charge was that um, Chloe was was badly miscast as the lead. Julianne Moore was miscast as the mom, blah, blah, blah whatever. While everyone's running around talking about how the casting is bad in this movie, this was most this was one of the most enjoyable um, subcast movies I've ever seen. I liked yeah. every bit player. Mm-hmm. I liked the bad boyfriend. I liked the bad girlfriend who mm-hmm. turned into like Bonnie Clyde a horror. I liked yeah. I liked the good uh, boyfriend and the good girlfriend. Like I the loved gym the gym was great. teacher yeah. was great. Right, the principal who like couldn't say tampon. <laughs> like every time he just would like <laughs> skip over it. <laughs> he was like they were throwing. Things. It, it was funny because like he was, at, it, they made him like a high school boy. He was like, I just can't, I can't <laughs> say it, I can't, can't, can't. <laughs> yeah, totally. I thought he was great, and then uh, I was yeah, the dad. The yeah, the dad. Like, the, oh my god, this is Ellis from Die Hard, the guy who's playing the dad of the bad the, girlfriend. Yeah, let's. I'm, I'll, I'll do names. That's what the list was. I think Chris is her name. So Chris, his dad is. Um, the guy who was Ellis and Die Hard, who was like one of the most legendarily weaselly characters <laughs> of all movies, and and the way that scene played out was the the Sue dragged him in and said, "My dad's gonna sue the school and sue you and do this. I want my prom privileges restored." And then they like trumped her, and and it was like turn around, and she was like turned to her dad from support, and he did the Ellis thing. He was like. Just hand over your phone. I got to get to work. <laughs> like, what, he totally shit. sold out his daughter. Like whatever. It was like Ellis the Revenge. It was, <laughs> it was like the whole subcast here is really really good. So I enjoyed that part of it. Everyone was like nailing this movie for casting, and you know, I, I was like, wow, I'm really enjoying all the characters that I'm meeting in this in this one. So, but let's cut to the chase of the of the where it gets really good because mm-hmm. we play up to the third act. And then, which is which is what everyone watches Carrie for, anyways. It's always to, that third totally. act, right? Absolutely. And the third act was executed, um, fucking great, right? I love the way the third act fucking went. The only thing I was waiting for it to do that I liked from the original, because I thought the remake did the fucking prom, like everything. It did the third act a thousand times better. I thought. Okay. The only thing I, I wish they would have had that I love, 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 love from the original is like the close up of her eyes, and she like does that like the, yeah. the, like swipe to the left, and then the door shut, swipe to the right, and then the door shut. Yeah. I fucking love that That's shot. Super cool. They didn't do that in this one, but they did the that really cool fucking shot where like the camera's like, uh, it's like tracking with the fucking auditorium while everyone's flying through the air and i was like oh god that shot's fucking cool yeah. there's even like a part that reminded me a little bit of spider-man 2 like the doc oxing when the fucking ca- totally. electric cables totally came up oh i fucking love that and that totally makes sense because the director of this kimberly pierce had said like i see this sort of like a superhero origin story yeah yeah, yeah. and that like that first blast wave that knocks everyone down and then you see um, the the good girl uh, Sue running outside because she's not in the auditorium when it happens and she's on her cell phone and she's like like calling 911 or something yeah, yeah. she's like help there's been an explosion like there's the, all this confusion between what's happening in the auditorium and what the people who are outside of it are, are thinking is happening because we've seen it's like a psychic blast wave mm-hmm. but it sounds like a fucking bomb <laughs> to, yeah. to, to the people and it blasted are, everyone against the, the door outside of it which was amazing right but then there's all these stylized, cool shots where she's using like the electrical wires, like they're snakes, mm-hmm. and she's like you killing people with bleachers, which was that was the cool, cool fucking. I was I was torn which what I liked like that was really creative, or was uh, uh, making the twins get trampled. Oh yeah, I really kind of like that. That was yeah. fucking brutal. That was <laughs> that was totally brutal, and it was interesting because. There was this moment where there's this weird moment where they are getting trampled and they reach out and hold each other's hands mm-hmm. while it's happening. And you have this like twinge of sympathy, like, cause they're bad people, you know, but mm-hmm. like they're, they're, they're reaching out to like comfort each other while they're getting trampled by this escape stampede. 
And it would, it put me in a really weird place watching it where like it was, they deserve to go, but you know, everyone is human and like has like these, like it was weird. It was, a, uh, it was a weird moment that I, I admired the movie for putting in to the whatever. And then it, it reminded me uh, in a strange way of that. What the, what's that scene in one of the final destination movies where the two oh. girls go in the suntan bed? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Because this, that was that, their death was that death, mm-hmm. except for those two girls were total idiots <laughs> who never got to like care about each other in any real way or whatever. Yeah. And this one, they had that moment where they were like supporting each other. And I was like, this movie's doing things a little different than a slasher, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, except to go super slasher when Carrie confronts her mom, but we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, I, I really, I don't. The the original is the ending is a little fuzzy for me, and I don't remember if there was like any like teachers or principals that she killed. Do you remember if she? I don't. I, I don't. It's been so I, long. Well, but I liked how she did not kill the good gym teacher. Yes, because I in the original I remember her killing like pretty much everyone in the room. Yeah, I think everyone died. Um, so I liked in this one like they were selective with like who got the most of it. Yes. So like the, uh, the suspense, you know, that was the thing is I, I kept wondering like, okay, so like in the original, I remember the, the guy is in on it. Yes. Right. Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, the film was fucked with me like on a, on a level where like I couldn't figure it out, which I loved. I was like, okay, at any moment, this guy's going to fucking pull. Yeah. We were sure he was in on it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, cause he was being like, cause they, they, they played it right where it was like he's being too nice. Yeah. He's texting the other girlfriend going, okay, yeah, she's real good. But yeah. I was just waiting for that moment where yeah. he like kind of like looks up at the bucket and it's like, yeah. all right, we're go- <laughs> all systems go. All right. So the film did a really good job at like if you if you went in thinking heavily about the original, it did a really fucking good job at like just fucking with you, not totally. being 100% sure on how they're going to play it. Totally. All right, so let's finish with the prom and move to the next scene because it's my favorite. But Best scene, yeah. When, when the prom is... So, like, there's all these stylized deaths that I really like, but there's this... Um, the, 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 the moment to me where she kind of, like, levitates out of there mm-hmm. and, like, leaves the destruction behind, right? And, and looks, like, completely... She's choreographing this scene in a way that Sissy SpaceX... She, her... Her detonation was more spontaneous. It was yeah, more yeah, yeah. like, you know, there was this. You're just spasming out. Yeah. Like killing this was everyone. slower because she was figuring out what happened to her and she was seeing the sunglasses glue in the roof and she was seeing that Tommy was dead on the floor from the bucket. Mm-hmm. And it, so it was slower in that, in that part. And then she kind of like slowly levitated out of the, out of the prom scene. But the thing that I really liked is what you liked, which was she saved the teacher, but she did it in a rageful way. So I'll give you an example. Like if, if my dog is, is trying to jump on the bed and he can't make it, I have a tiny dog. Um, (laughs) like I'll have pity on him and I'll kind of lift him onto the bed. If you're, if you, if you care about someone, you're like doing it in sort of a gentle way. Yeah. She throttled the gym teacher. Mm -hmm. She grabbed her by the throat in telekinesis ways or hypnotism ways. If you're the idiot boy, the boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. but she lifted her. She was still doing it in a way that hurt and was mad. Like I liked the combination of, I'm going to save you, but I'm so mad that it's like, I, I, I might just, so I might just good. crush your throat, but I'm still thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like and they, they let her hang there for just totally, up. Right. You're like, okay, if you're going to do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But then they saved her. I fucking loved that. Yeah, it was just a great combination of whatever. So she floats out, and then we end up in the car scene, which was amazing. Best fucking see. I was wondering, like, I so she she sees the two fucking people like getting away, and they're driving, and then the the ground starts to crack, and I was like, please don't just like let the like a hole in the ground swallow. Well, that would yes, be, I thought that was that was what was gonna. I happen. thought that was gonna happen too. And I was like, oh, don't let don't. Let, don't like, just drop boring. into a fucking pothole. That would be right? so goddamn boring. Totally. And so I, I, I thought that was what's going to happen. But then when she just sort of like, you know, snared the fucking car, by like, <laughs> you know, having it lift up. I was like, oh, yes, she's going to really. Well, she cracks day. the ground. I actually I really liked this. I liked this moment in this movie because the the these these. Bonnie and Clyde, I'm going to call them from now on, yeah, are yeah. sitting in the car watching all the ambulances and fire trucks go by. 
And they're having this discussion about how they're going to go escape town and live their Bonnie and Clyde horror lives mm-hmm. and never come back. The guy was definitely not a high schooler, right? He no, was, yeah. He yeah. was no, definitely no, like the fucking... 40-year-old. Yeah, but, was... so, but, but they're having this discussion, and because they're having this dumb discussion, they've delayed long enough for Carrie to basically just be behind them, right? Yeah. And they they pull off, and she cracks the ground, and she she you can tell it takes some effort, right? I think that's another thing I like about the movie was... It wasn't effortless. You could tell that she was mm-hmm. Carrie. Carrie was putting work in. Yeah. So she like splits to the ground, and th- this is the thing that made me laugh. The the road blows up in front of the car, and these d- idiots still don't know that Carrie's th- this avenging bloody angel is behind them. By After the seeing right? like half yeah, the fucking prom, <laughs> they have no, they're so stupid. And the car like veers off to miss this thing. And the guy, do you remember what he says? He looks at the road and he goes, "Shitty town." <laughs> <laughs> like he thinks like the town's falling apart or like you know whatever like it's so weird and funny that they still have no idea so they back up because they can't go forward and when they're driving they see carrie mm-hmm. and she looks and, so badass oh my god like, it's a great shot. i fucking love it it it's, looks good in the original it looked just as fucking good it was so good it was such a great shot and they charge that car towards her and chris is like they're like killer the 80, killer yeah. killer punch the gas pedal and what I expect typical couple, typical couple. She, he's going eighty, heading right towards Carrie, and mm-hmm. she goes, "Hit her, hit her." He's like, "I got it, babe." Stop side seat driving. <laughs> I'm already on it. <laughs> I've got this. <laughs> I'm the one who killed the pig with the hammer. I got this. <laughs> it's easy. So they jam it, and they're right. And I swear, when I was watching, I thought to myself. She was going to levitate in the air and fuck with them from above. Sort of like Cherry Darling, Planet Terror, yeah, yeah, yeah. shooting leg style. Or she was going to make the car veer and flip and do rolls and like whatever. God. And when they I, hit I that, had a like, feeling what was going to happen. She had like a, she put a like, like <clears throat> phone invisible. pole force field in front of her. And the car like wrapped around it and stopped instantaneously. God. It, it, well, I was wondering, like, I had a feeling that was what was going to happen. Did you? But I, I was yeah. wondering like who was going to die. And I just love how you watch the guy die in slow motion, but it looked fucking nasty when totally. he did it. I love well, that. Well, it was nasty until the next slow motion. I didn't, I motion. actually thought his was probably worse. Did you? I thought it was more bit. realistic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, sure. yeah. Because windshields are hard to crack, and that bitch's face cra- went through <laughs> the windshield, and she was still... There's no... There's no. <laughs> I love that part. I thought that was. I have nothing but respect for him. I like. I, I really liked it, but it I was just, a cool shot. Yeah. I just like that hurt my nose watching the guy because his, his, that was what happened. That's his true. nose hits the thing, and I'm like, totally. oh my fucking yeah. god. Yeah, he was. Like, that's really. I, I've hit my nose in some shit, so I'm like. <laughs> but see, that's the other thing that I actually really liked was was they they went all the way with uh, Chris, the bad characters. Like Carrie levitates the car in the air, and they lock eyes to each other. And this idiot, the girl in the car, punches Jeez. the gas pedal, which is what's going to lead to her. Like, and it didn't work before. <laughs> no, it's not going to work in the air. You don't get traction on fucking oxygen. It's not a, it's not a thing, right? So like, <sighs> it's just like a malicious instinct. It's like that story about the scorpion and the frog or whatever and like oh yeah, yeah the yeah, scorpion yeah, yeah. but you know stings any like why would you sting me he's like i'm a scorpion <laughs> like she's like she's just gonna punch that gas pedal 100 times out of 100 times because she just mm. she's just she's malevolent and dumb yeah right? she's so, dumb so that yeah i just like the combination of how that scene went down like whatever and then i really actually liked how carrie just kind of like contemptuously blew up the gas station and wiped out the evidence and like whatever on the way I don't out. think she cared a goddamn bit <laughs> about the evidence. Maybe, yeah, just she, rage <laughs> you're the only one like covered, like drenched in blood. Well, then again, it doesn't matter because everyone knows she right. was fucked with. So. Right. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, she got away with it. She cleaned up the crime pretty well. <laughs> Wait, I, who knows if it was just like pure rage or whatever. It was just, that was, because a lot of what, a lot of what this Carrie was doing looked like effort when she was, when she was killing people in the prom or even when she was practicing like levitating books or whatever, it looked like by the way she was moving her hands and, and her facial expressions. Like it was hard to either do it or pull it all together and, and coordinate it. Mm-hmm. But that last scene, she was just like, you can't see this because of the podcast, but she was literally, it's like psh, flick of the wrist <laughs> and everything <laughs> psh, 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 and blew up. dropped the gas in the fire and like whatever. And it was the most effortless move you know yeah it's like 
the 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 fucked up thing is she's getting better and better and better at something that's bad. Yeah, for her. she studied. She was a bookworm. She was reading about it. <laughs> she totally. She's she probably totally. the only one in the school studying. <laughs> <laughs> She's not probably. She definitely was the only one in the school. And not only she thinks she was studying, <laughs> got everyone killed. <laughs> All right, so now she comes home, and and her mother has. I really like Julian Moore. Her mother has rodent chewed her way out of the out of the closet that she was stuck. I in. loved the mom in this one. I don't think she was Miss. Cast at all. Okay, first of all, Julianne Moore is one of our best actresses, so it's hard to even miscast her, especially in like she a, can do whatever the fuck she wants. Right? No, she wasn't perfect. She she chewed some scenery, but she. I mean, I, I love that. I really liked. I yeah, I really liked. There was there was there was some some quiet evil like Piper Laurie playing the original one was great. She was amazing, but she was like she was also over the top, but she was. Julia Moore was more controlled, and the cutter thing. Oh, the cutter scenes. Too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All of that crap. That was actually one of the the queasiest moments of this movie. Was that scene where that idiot was talking to her the dry cleaners, and she was like, like just cutting herself. The knife under and her oh thigh. my god, it was horrible. It's not, she not just couldn't. Movie. She couldn't even deal with that lady. She was like, "You're a fucking idiot." I'm still <laughs> through this conversation. I hate your guts. <laughs> I'd rather <laughs> cut an artery than talk to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's how I feel like every time I read like a like a twenty percent fresh review of this remake, I just jabbed a scalpel. Yeah, like fucking into my idiot. Head. You don't even know anything. I was just doing that. So anyway, so she gets home and they have their confrontation, and I thought that also was really cool. Um, I loved just the swarm of implements that floated up in the air. To, well, I liked I liked the I can see where people like didn't like the scene where like Carrie's home like the mom's like in the background walking slow and like yeah that was I can I can see them not liking that totally. stuff because it is a little like whatever yep but like I and, and I was wondering I knew the mom was gonna stab her because that's what happened in the original I knew, and she oh she yes. they, they made a big thing about her and that knife in yes. particular totally um. So I, like I was just waiting for like when she went to go stab it for like Carrie like stop it before it like went in her back, mm-hmm. but then it happened. I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> this is gonna be good." <laughs> so you were mentioning all the all the objects floating yes. in the in the air. The one the thing that grossed me out, and they had a specific close up of it, was out of all the objects that she's been impaled with, a fucking ruler <laughs> that was one of them. Like the least fucking thing that you know, not pointy fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, that takes some force. Just went right into her. Yikes. That's not... So, yeah, but the, I mean, some of it was some of that part was a little choppy. Um, mm-hmm. That was the thing was I get that you don't want to walk around covered in pig's blood, but I feel like your psychotic mom that you can find to a closet, you can't locate her. And then you go take a five minute bath before you find your mom. I thought that was at that little... point. You, you Although feel... she is protected by telekinetic powers. Yeah. You feel like a God at that point. You're like, yeah, I'm going to take a sure. bath. I'm going to clean up. But then that leads me to my next point because she gets stabbed and then she forgets how to do telekinesis for the next two minutes. Cause then they get into a straight well, I thought about that. Match. Yeah. I thought about that. Like that. I get why she didn't do it because like she, it's her fucking, it's her mom. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, she, she's done it to her mom several times already. She lifted her up in the air and threw her in a closet. Yeah. But like this is now the mom is like officially like trying to end Carrie. I, the only thing that made sense to me was that her power is growing mm-hmm. and she saw what happened to the prom in the car and she was afraid to use the power because it would be way over scale. Right. She knew it was going to be like a death blow. Mm-hmm. She couldn't just like pick her up and like pin her anymore. Like her power was out of control. You know what I mean? That's the only thing I can think of because the next thing is she implodes the entire house. So yeah, but her like, power seems to be growing. I don't think she, but then the other thing is she could be stunned because she was stabbed. Like, I don't know. It was just, and a it's her weird. mom. I think that's the biggest thing is like, yeah, holy shit. The, my I get that. Except that. for she's done it precise. Mo- she literally held her mom's mouth shut. Like, yeah, but that was just to shut the fuck up. All she has to do is stop her from grabbing the knife. And like, plus like, it was, that was a little weird. I've never been stabbed at, <laughs> but I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming the shit going through your head is probably not the clearest. And you're not thinking about your <laughs> telekinesis. So I don't know. I, I and for podcast research, Nick's going to have to get stabbed. I've, just to nope. Nope. I, I have cats with claws. That's the <laughs> closest, that's the closest get. I'm going to get. Yes. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I sort of got it. Like, I was, it wasn't a big deal because I knew obviously they weren't going to kill Carrie. So yeah, I know. It, no, it didn't of, take me out of it. Uh, but 
before we wrap up, let's talk about the things that weren't good or did take us out of it. I have I have one particular gripe, which was, um, oh God, this guy's name. What's this guy's name? Tommy. Of course it's Tommy. Tommy um, is a char- character who has the IQ of the microphone that's in front of me right now. Yep. For the majority of the movie. But he has this weird penchant of quoting like elaborate poetic verses from time to time that his character would never say. And I, it was like so obvious that it was the symbolism of the movie needed it. Like the scene where they're at the prom and they're voting and they're crossing the names and, and, and Carrie's like, who should we vote for? He's like, vote for ourselves. To the devil with false modesty. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like that character is not saying that sentence ever in his life to anyone. No, ever. He, it wasn't the, right. No, he's like the devil. No. What? Right. His yeah. <laughs> right. The the most eloquent thing that character could possibly say is like, "Go calves." Like, that's pull not, my finger. <laughs> that's not, hey, Gary. It's totally not a thing. So, like, there were a couple of moments where they were having characters say things like the 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 poem that Carrie read in in the class that were dropping symbolism into the movie that I thought mm-hmm. was kind of a little much but I mean it's a pretty minor gripe for for a the movie dick that hole I English teacher that oh that guy was such an asshole I wanted him to be at the prom yeah I was, I was he should have been there I was looking for him that's the biggest mistake this movie made was that guy wasn't there he should have been there and he should have been impaled by he like a been. flying quill or something. Or an English book just <laughs> smacks on the back of the head. <laughs> totally, yeah, totally. It would have been great. <laughs> that would have been a perfect yeah. thing for that, that douchebag. I would have gone to see I would have definitely seen that. You could have like jammed a book of haikus through him. <laughs> <laughs> I could not have been happier. <laughs> a book a book just uh, okay, okay. with pages filled of Carrie's poem. <laughs> Kills him. So take uh, what was that again? <laughs> okay, that was great, Carrie. Fuck, I hated that guy. <laughs> How about you? Were there things that you thought were um, like weak moments or the only thing? And it, we, we sort of talked about this a little bit uh, before we were recording was the Chris, the girl that was her name, right? Chris, the Chris is the bad one. The bad one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She was just a little over the top. Like it was, it was like, she, was. she did a really dick thing. And then was like, what I do? She also reminded me of like the guy at the end of the Warriors. Was like, what did what I do? What I didn't even do nothing, guys. I love, but I did. I I thought she was a little over the top. But to make up for that, see, that's that's why I'm so like, I don't know if it's really a negative thing. Sure. Because then she she tried to like have everyone on the soccer field be like, join me. They can't. That was a they great can't scene. Do if we all, all stick us. together, there will be no prom without us. And they were she like, was like leading a rebellion of prom, like. <laughs> and then they were like. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, we don't have your You bag. know what prom tickets go for? Yeah, <laughs> Non-refundable. <laughs> uh-uh. Yeah. You idiot. That's totally, yeah. She was a little over the top. That was my biggest gripe. I just thought that was a little bit of bad writing. I thought, like, I thought her psych. it made sense for her psychology to be like, why is anyone siding with that useless piece of shit carry against me? Yeah. But the argument that we didn't do anything wrong seemed dumb even for her i didn't right like because obviously you upload that video and like embarrass the fuck out of her so <laughs> right. it's like you have no grounds yeah to... you just got to own it and go all in and be like you know i'm i'm popular here and she's not and i can do whatever she would I want. be what what is it in D D like bad evil 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 she'd be yeah it's like neutral good, well then bad, she'd neutral. probably be like she i mean i don't even want to say that i, I think she's just chaotic evil i think that's what it is chaotic evil yeah, that's what i was thinking of like, whatever but that's the thing was she was that the writing for her was a little bit like you said it's over the top but it's also a little bit inconsistent because she's smart enough to figure out like this overarching revenge plan but she's too dumb to realize that you just don't say out loud i didn't do anything wrong cause yeah that was my only gripe everything else i thought was like pretty solid the pacing was pretty was was on point the the acting aside for her little my gripe with her was a little bit the gym teacher, which she tried to act like, what'd you say? You're going to be suspended. I thought that was a <laughs> l- just a, that was a little, just a dash weak sauce. But like, other a- than that, I, I really, really enjoyed the fucking movie. That scene f- felt a little artificial, Yeah, but it was still fun. Like that's, you know, because that's like, that's like, what's at stake for high school. That's, that's, right. that's, that's what screenwriters have at stake for high schoolers. <laughs> Prom. If you if you prom. Fuck, if you act up, you ain't going to prom. You're not gonna walk. That's what you got. Yeah, absolutely. That's what. 
<laughs> that's that's how you hold high scores by the balls <laughs> in filmmaking. All right, so we did the ratings already. We, we're we're sticking to our guns here. The the how low can we go series is really trying to find movies that we think have deserve higher ratings than where they're at. Um, I know that honestly, we're gonna get a point where we're gonna like this movie deserves this rating or lower, but we haven't hit it yet. Nope. I'm excited because I think this movie deserves like I think we 30 got, points plus of what it's getting. I be. think we're good for until the 20s. You think we're good until the 20s? I think, we're good. I think the 20s is going to be right. Well, actually, let's let's wrap up because um, uh, we should explain this. We called another Audible. I should have said this at the beginning. Yeah. And and we called an Audible because it's my fault. I screwed up and we, we had asked people on our uh, Facebook Live video. And if you're not following us on facebook on hello weekly you should Mm -hmm. um we asked people on our face on our facebook live video of the four movies we had pulled out of the 48 percent bracket which do you think is our best bet to enjoy so it was windchill something hellraiser 2 hellraiser 2 the ruins and this and i had miscounted the votes so it turned out many more people had told us to watch the carry remake the ruins we were originally going to watch the ruins Mm -hmm. i have a sneaking suspicion if we watch the ruins that I would be telling you right now that the movie is really close to what it deserves as a rating. Yeah. Right. So that we, I, but mean, I, I know you think we're safe to the twenties, but I feel like we actually just dodged I, a bullet. And I, but that's, <laughs> it's funny. Cause like, I think you're right. But last time I watched the ruins, I remember I really liked it. So like now, uh, now I'm so curious. Yeah. So now I'm curious, like maybe what if I do feel that way? Cause like, <laughs> cause I have to think that because if I watch it, I don't want to watch it again. Right. Like, so, I'm, I'm, you know, not for like the show, but just, right. I want to watch it again and be like, uh, and like force myself to be like, no, that's clearly a 60%. You know what I mean? Like I want to watch it just be like, give it like my honest, like, did that movie right. really suck? Or, and or and I mean, just so that we can clear this up because we're, we're, this is not, again, this is not an endorsement of Rotten Tomatoes, which I mostly hate. It's a, it's a convention. It's a convenience for how we're organizing the list of movies we watch. Right. Yeah. The point isn't. The Rotten Tomatoes is a great like website. Whatever, it's actually a terrible website. It's super not user friendly. But the 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 point is that critics tend to underrate horror movies, and and you know it gets worse when you aggregate it all into one spot uh, spot on a website, right? Yeah so, yeah. so that's the thing is like now we're as we're heading down. My my expectation is that just by odds, when we start to get into thirty or twenty percent aggregate movies. We're, we're going to have very few choices of good movies to find, but we'll find out. We're going to find out. We'll, well, so far, so good. So far, so good. I like this journey. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And, we're, and I'm glad you guys are on it with us. Um, let us know what you think of Carrie Remake and or The Ruins <laughs> on our Facebook page. <laughs> join our Facebook page. Join the private Facebook group because there's a lot of... Oh, it's such a fun group. A lot there. of good shit going on that in there. That community is fantastic. It's really good. Someone... We have a we have a movie coming up on our How Low Can We Go. I forget where it's at, but it's way lower than it should be, which is Event Horizon, which I already can tell you deserves... Like 30-something. Yeah, it deserves, it like, like, deserves 30% higher than it has, but... Um, someone had posted in the private group just kind of like soliciting opinion for it and they got like 200 answers and it was so good to see. A lot see. of love came off of that movie. Yeah, the, yeah, it's so good to see that, you know, that, that movie's getting the attention it deserves, but it's also a credit to the taste of our group. So yeah. Good they, job in there, guys. So they really like it. And if you liked this episode, we want to bring you many, many more like it and more frequently. So the best way you can help us do that is find your way to our Patreon account, which is patreon.com slash Weekly. Um, anything you can do, we appreciate it. It helps steal away time from our day job so we can do more things like this. Yeah, we can we can weed out the bad films for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, that so. easy. And until next time, stay scary. Bye, guys. Bye.